Streets of Rage, a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up franchise created by Sega in the early 90s. It was one of the many big franchises back in the day, along with Sonic the Hedgehog, Golden Axe, and the Super Shinobi series. I'm going to talk about the original 16-bit classic, along with two 8-bit ports, one for the Game Gear, and the other for the Master System. So, let's get started! The first entry, released in the latter half of 1991, nearly a year after the disappointing but successful Super Nintendo port of the original Final Fight in Japan. Sega was quick to respond by producing a new IP that was not a port from the arcades and making it exclusive to their consoles. The game had two major selling points that were used against Capcom's console port, two-player co-op support and a lot more enemies on the screen at once. This game features the following content available to the game. Three playable characters, Axel Stone, Blaze Fielding and Adam Hunter. Eight stages, five enemy types and six different bosses. The three playable characters can perform the following set of moves. Flurry, Fury, Throw, Backdrop, Jump Attack, and Rear Attack. There are two hidden moves that are very situational, including Team Throw and Double Leg Kick to Neck Throw. Fortunately, the heroes are not alone as one of the buttons allows them to call the police for backup. The animation of the attack is based on the controller port. This powerful attack will one hit kill any regular enemy in the game and deals major damage to the bosses. This is best compared to a full screen magic attack in Golden Axe. Both the gameplay and graphics seem to be very basic compared to its sequels and by today's standards. There is one element that has aged very well, the background music. Composer Yoshio Koshiro was influenced by club music and electronic dance from both America and Europe, specifically of the techno and house varieties, and intended to be the first to introduce these sounds to video games. There are two endings in this game. One of them is a hidden ending where the player becomes the new head of crime syndicate. This can only be achieved in two player mode and it requires one player to say yes to Mr. X and the other to say no. The player who said yes needs to take out its teammate before taking out Mr. X to unlock the bad ending. For game performance, it can run 60 frames per second during certain parts including round start, round clear, and counter bios from the introduction sequence. The rest of the game, including gameplay, runs at 30 frames per second. I wouldn't think it could handle 60 frames at all when it is possible to have over 12 characters on the screen at once. The franchise's first game didn't get the same level of popularity as Sonic 1, but it was still worthy enough to not only get a more successful sequel, but also a few 8-bit ports and a lot of re-releases in the future for the following systems. Sega Mega CD, GameCube and PlayStation 2, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, Wii's Virtual Console, PC Steam, and 3DS eShop. Sega Mega CD is notable for replacing the original voice clips with brand new ones. Both Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 have added online play and 5 trial mode challenges. Lastly, 3DS is notable for not only adding glasses-free 3D support, but also a brand new mode called Fist of Death, 
where any attack the player will use can kill any enemy or boss in a single hit. In fact, this mode's highest difficulty can be completed much faster than playing through the regular mode on the lowest possible difficulty. In late 1992, Streets of Rage made its 8-bit debut for the Sega Game Gear. Portable gaming powered by 6 AA batteries. And that is where the good news ends. Right away, one of the main characters, Adam Hunter, has been completely removed entirely from the title screen to the character select screen. Combat is extremely sluggish as it takes forever to perform flurry combos as enemies have long damage invincibility frames and it's not even possible to execute fury attacks when grabbing an enemy. The most reliable way to defeat enemies very quickly are jump kicks, pipe swings, back attacks and knife stabs. The knife is a pretty good weapon but it does a distance check before the actual execution, whether it is a close range stab or a long range throw. This version removed stages 2, 3 and 7, leaving only 5 stages in total. The number of bosses was cut down from 6 to 4, as boss fights against Zamza and Abadidi were both removed from the game. Despite fewer stages, certain sections tend to drag on quite a lot by having a high amount of overall enemies players need to take out before advancing to the next section. Did you know that this is the only time ever Axel has been given a max possible rank on jumping? The footage you see here is his actual jump, not a cheat code. So what is the performance for this game? Well, it runs at a disappointingly low 20 frames per second and during the more intense situations it can eat the player's input, ignoring vital commands. The game can only handle up to 4 characters on the screen at once, which is just over 50% less than the 16-bit version. In fact, when you play solo, it can spawn up to 3 enemies, but for 2-player co-op, it is dropped down to 2 enemies. The backup cop car attack was replaced with a special S item which causes a powerful full screen attack, killing regular enemies and dealing major damage to bosses. Partway through the last level, there is a blue timer item that gives the player an extra continue. Attacking an enemy who is grabbed by your teammate will only take damage when they are free, but if your partner performs a throw or a backdrop attack, damage from non-grab based moves will be ignored. Enemies become invisible when there are loads of dropped items on the ground. When you enter Mr. X's room, the battle begins immediately so there's only one ending in this version. Fighting against two Noras, two Jacks, and two Hakuros before fighting against Mr. X himself. The challenge against Mr. X pretty much depends on knowing that back attack makes the user invincible and can counter Mr. X's charge attack very well. The move can also deflect bullets too, that's how good back attack is against him. The next 8-bit version I'm going to cover only came out in a few selected territories. A few months after Game Gear, Streets of Rage finally came out to the 8-bit console. This version only came out in both Europe and Brazil, a few years after the final official release of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 in America. Right away, the presentation before the actual gameplay seems to be missing some key components. Where the heck is the options menu? Grabbing is almost perfect as it restored the knee smash command. The only real flaw is that you have to approach towards the enemy much closer than usual to execute the grab. Collision detection in this game is really wonky as the attacking hitbox tends to be active much sooner than intended, or just plain flat out wrong. The stage structure seems to be improved over the original as it introduces a new boss in round 6 who is very small and can launch human seeking missiles. Thanks to this extra boss, the section structure in round 8 feels complete because the end of each section now involves fighting against a boss from the previous 6 stages. Police backup was fully restored, but it involves pausing the game and then pushing a single button to call the police. 
This is pretty risky when playing it on a small cartridge converter as you might accidentally push the cartridge far enough to crash the game due to tilting. Performance is the most surprising out of the three versions because the frame rate runs at a much higher 60 frames per second. This is more than the 16-bit version, but let's be honest here, there were a lot of sacrifices that had to be made in order to maintain this high frame rate. There are only up to two enemies on the screen at once, and they can only be the exact same type. In other words, you can't be fighting against one Nora and one Signal at the same time. That alone is already worse than a Game Gear release. On the flip side however, each section can have more than two types of enemies overall. So one section could involve fighting a pair of Noras, Signal and then Garcias before advancing to the next section. The Game Gear version is limited to two different types of enemies per section. In round 5 of the fairy stage, the background isn't animated at all. Take a look at the scene. Every single Nora from stages 5 to 8 will perform a mercy beg after taking a single punch. When Jack is walking and juggling the weapons, the projectiles have no hitbox until one is thrown, so you can just walk up to them and abuse grab attacks to deal decent damage very quickly. Boss AI is by far the strangest I have ever seen in a side-scrolling beat'em up, as 5 out of the 7 bosses will only change direction after they have left the screen. The biggest omission was the removal of 2 player mode. The use of background music tracks seems illogical at times if you listen very carefully. One final oddity about the Master System is that there's absolutely no staff credit at all. It just shows pictures of the ending sequence and plays the background music, that's it. And so that's all three releases of Streets of Rage. Are they all worth playing today? Without hesitation, the 16-bit version is the strongest and is still widely available to platforms other than the original console. The Game Gear version is simply an average Game Gear game and an awful Street of Rage game. It feels very sluggish in terms of combat and pacing and can be unfair at certain times. It's still short enough to not drain a new pack of 6 AA batteries. I would say avoid this unless you want to be a completionist. Lastly, the Master System, while not bad, there are some weird game design choices here and there, including a lack of co op and a proper menu. But it is a visually impressive game for a system with good quality 8 bit character sprites, a high frame rate, and is the longest out of three versions to complete the game. I would strongly recommend this 8 bit version over the Game Gear entry without a doubt. That's the end of another episode of Port Talk. What did you think about this upbeat episode? Feel free to comment, like, subscribe to YouTube and follow me on Twitter. Oh and one more thing, 
the mega hit sequel Streets of Rage 2 will have its own episode later in the future, covering the original 16-bit release and the two 8-bit ports which came out over a year later. Until next time, thank you for watching.